Okay, in this video, I'd like to show you about the lowest energy wave function in your 1D quantum linear harmonic oscillator. So in a previous video, and it's the first video in my series, I did the dimensionless Schrodinger equation, and I, sh I kind of hinted that we had these kind of raising and lowering operators. So I'm just going to show you one of, my, uh, one of the Schrodinger equations. We had y minus del del y times y plus del del y, acting on a wave function, we'll say, of, uh, of y, is going to be equal to, so with y minus, that's going to be equal to twice epsilon, that's twice epsilon minus 1 uh, times u of y. And just let me check if that's correct. y minus, yeah, that's correct. And this turned out that this, although he had a minus sign here, that when we actually applied this operator, we got an energy raised by one unit of energy. And we had the y plus operator, we had an energy lowered by one unit of energy. And the order of which, at which they were applied is very important. Okay, so obviously you needed to know which one you're going to apply first. So if we know that the y plus ddy operator, the y plus ddy operator, will lower my energy. So the question is this, at what stage, at what will be my wave function u of y, which will give me zero energy? So if I keep lowering it, obviously when I get to my lowest energy, if I apply my lowering operator again, I'm going to get zero energy. So let's see what happens if I do that. Okay, so just, I'm going to call this u0, just um, I, because we know this is going to be my lowest energy wave function. So I'm just going to get y times u plus del u del y is equal to 0. And this is just a very simple separation by a separation of variables integral. So you get yu is equal to negative del u del y. Okay, or you could say that, uh, you could say that, uh, let's me see now, del u over u is equal to minus y del y, like that. Okay, we're going to integrate both of these. Um, so we're going to get, we'll say, the natural logarithm of u is equal to, uh, what have I done wrong here? Oh, yeah, that's minus y squared over 2. Okay, now, of course, we have a plus a constant, but we're going to ignore our plus constant for the moment. So look, basically, when we rearrange this, if we, we rearrange this, we can take um, by taking exponentials on both sides. The exponentials will kill a logarithm because they're inverse functions. So just be left with u is equal to e to the minus y squared over 2. And take into account the fact that I didn't, we'll say I didn't normalize this, I'm going to multiply by a constant. Or because I didn't use limits in my integral. Okay, and this is going to be u0. So u0 is a constant times e to the minus y squared over 2. And this is the lowest energy wave function in your 1D quantum linear harmonic oscillator. And this is unnormalized because we're just using a constant. Okay, and that was pretty straightforward. I'd expect that that was nothing very difficult to for you. So, what happens if we find out the energy in the system? Okay, how do we find out the energy? If we know that u of 0, okay, or we'll say, how about I write it this way? It might be easier. u0 of y, how about that? Is equal to constant times e to the minus y squared over 2. Just like that. So, let's then plug this into our Schrodinger equation. So what form are we going to use? Are we going to use the y plus, y minus, or the y minus, y plus? And I'll show you why, what one we use and why. So if I use y minus ddy like this, y plus ddy, acting on my wave function, so it's a times e to the minus y squared over 2, and that's going to be equal to twice epsilon minus 1 times a times e to the minus y squared over 2. Now look. Y, y plus y minus on u0, we used a moment ago. We used the fact that this was 0 in order to find out our wave function. So this is 0. That means all of this is 0. That means, we, well, of course, our wave functions are non-zero, because otherwise we'd have nothing. So that means that twice epsilon, twice epsilon minus 1 is equal to 0, and that epsilon is equal to 1 half. And uh, that's supposed to be a 1, believe it or not. But what was epsilon? We made the substitution. We wanted, we wanted a dimensionless energy, and we said that e over h bar omega is equal to epsilon. That means that uh, if we multiply, that means that we'll say e here is equal to h bar omega over two. So the energy, the lowest energy in our system is h bar omega over two. That's the lowest energy, or the energy of your lowest order wave function in your one D linear harmonic oscillator. Now. What is important about that? What is what is strange about that? Well, I suppose what's strange is the answer isn't zero. 
because in a classical system there is such a thing as zero energy you can have any energy you want that's why we had we'll say our parabola if we plotted our energies like this we could have any energy we would have this one this one this one this one this one this one whatever energy we could have zero if you wanted any energy is possible we have a continuum of energies but in our quantum system we're told that the lowest energy we'll say e zero is equal to h bar omega over two there is a lowest energy we call this the zero point energy all right so if we actually go plot this what you'll find is as follows you'll find that for n is equal to zero you're going to have h bar omega over two energy for n is equal to one we're going to have three over two h bar omega for n is equal to two we're going to have five over two h bar omega energy so the point here is that the minimum energy is one half h bar omega and each interval between or each increment thereafter is just one unit of h bar omega so we'll say what happens why can't we have um, I don't know 2 over 2 h bar omega and the answer is that it's not allowed it is a, a disallowed energy level that energy level cannot exist so if you're plotting this on our, if you're plotting our energies we have these kind of gaps in our energy like this these disallowed or forbidden energy levels like that okay and that is very important that means, for example, if you cool your system down to zero Kelvin, which we can't do, of course, but if you could cool it to zero Kelvin, you'd find that your energy, your system would still always have H bar omega over two energy. It must have it. That's just the end of it. Um, yeah, that's, that's just the end of it, really. Now, just, I suppose, as an aside, and this very much is an aside, that if you do a bit of solid state physics, you'd realize that in your system you have the following. You're going to have, we'll say, your zero point, I'm going to say ZP for zero point energy, plus you're going to have phonons. They, this is the energy in a solid, right? And these phonons are thermally generated vibrations in your system, and they're quantized as well. They're, they're not photons, they're phonons. Thermally generated vibrations, and I probably will do some videos on those. But these are thermally generated. So if I cool my system down, these will go away. But my zero point energy of, in this case, H bar omega over 2, is there's no T in there. There's no T dependence whatsoever. So no matter how much I cool my system down, I will still have this H bar omega over 2 vibrational zero point energy. Okay, so my atom will say, if you're thinking about an atom, will be jiggling around. And even when you cool it to zero, zero energy, it's still, or zero, um, zero temperature, or zero Kelvin, it's still moving. Okay, and this is definitely something new. Okay, this is something we wouldn't have seen in the past. Alright, so I'm going to leave it there for a moment. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.